Hey, this is me far in the future editing this video. Uh, this was filmed in the new studio setup. The first video I did as a little test of all the equipment and apparently the equipment wasn't good enough. There's crackling and static in the audio because of the cable. I bought a cable that's too long and probably was broken. I apologize for the bad quality. Uh, you can already see I change stuff in the future. So it's going to be better quality from now on. And if you like the video so far, maybe give it a little thumbs up. I need 60 painted poxwalkers because I'm going to a tournament in three weeks in Lisbon and I'm bringing 60 poxwalkers, 50 cultists and 27 nurgling bases. I'm going all in on a death guard swarm and I'm going to show you how to slap chop this little guy and then I'm going to show you how to take it a little bit further with just a few more steps to make him look really gruesome and awful. And let's get started. We're beginning with a quick layer of contrast Gilliman flesh all over the skin of this mini. And it's fine if I hit other parts of the mini, like these pants here. I'm gonna do some on purpose so you can see how I fix it later. And because I'm going to paint over them with darker colors uh, or with not contrast colors. They will just cover up. It's a good one to know, especially when you're painting 60 models. Know which paints cover which paint, what you're gonna paint with what paint later on. That way you can work much faster. You don't have to be neat. This is not neat at all. I, I'll put some on the weapon on purpose and then I'll show you how I paint over it later on. But none of this matters. The Gilliman flesh dries up really light and it's easy to cover over. Next up is Militarm Green for all the cloth bits, the pants in this case. And I'm doing this on all my pox walkers for a few reasons. One, it's faster to just put all the cloth in all the same color. Two, I want them to look like Cadians that have been infected. These are battle casualties that have then been infected by the Death Guard. And three, if I do this, I first paint the, the skin with Gilliman Flesh. I then paint the cloth with Astro Militarm Green. Then after that, I just dry brush the whole model with some Nurgling Green. And this way the skin gets a nice sickly green tone and the green pants get a nice little highlight. And Remember the Gilliman flesh that I put over there? You can barely see it. It is there, but I guess it's just a dirty spot on his pants. I, do, I don't think box walkers really do their laundry. So I'm dry brushing over everything and I make sure that especially I hit these boils with the Nurgling green. I want them to stand out against the rest of the skin. But the rest is a gentle dry brush. I'm using one of these brushes, the thin ones, not one of these round brushes that are now super popular when you dry brush. I like this when I want to do something a bit more detailed while dry brushing. I know it's a bit of a contradiction. Dry brushing isn't very detailed, but this way you have a little bit more control. And for these small models where you just want to hit these pus boils and the maggots and give it a little bit of a highlight, I like this brush still very much. I fucked up, guys. I'm sorry, I have 30 more box walkers to paint and I picked the one that doesn't have tentacles. So I can't show you how I paint tentacles. Here are some pictures of finished box walkers and all these tentacles are painted the same way with contrast Magos purple and it is a light pink. It works really well on these tentacles, especially after spraying with some wraith bone, it gives it a nice sort of deep pinkish color. But yeah. This guy doesn't have any tentacles, so I can't actually show you painting this. I don't know what to say. Let's move on to the next step, which is the weapon. And I'm going to start with a layer of contrast black legion. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the Wraithbone spray that I used. It's very bright, it's very white. And I'm going to rust out this weapon and I just want to make sure that all the recesses are dark first, because otherwise you might have this little white spot that's in there that you missed with your painting and it's jumping out at you and it just, it just looks really bad. So make sure this black Templar, you can dilute it a little bit. It's there to get really deep into the recesses. Make sure there's nothing white left because then after that we can cover it with typhus corrosion. And this is the basis for any kind of rust, whether it's a very simple one that I'm gonna do right now or a more intricate one that I did in my plate burst crawler with lots of enamels and AK interactive paints and so on. I'm gonna keep it simple, we're slap chopping, we're trying to paint a load of box walkers in just a week or two. Uh, so it's just types closed first and then after that a quick dry brush of riser rust all over this weapon. And riser rust is super bright so again I'm using a flat dry brush to just apply a little bit. Don't do too much, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. And in the meantime, I also did all these rings that he has hanging off his pants and I'm gonna give them a little bit of a rust as well. And it's fine if you hit the pants, 
because if a rusty item like these rings is touching the pants the rust will flake off and it will leave rust stains on the cloth as well so a good excuse to work rough and not care too much about uh, hitting the pants as well now we'll do the cordyceps and yes that's a big word cordyceps are these things growing out of him at least in my fox walkers a lot of people paint them as if they're horns or bones sticking out I paint them fairly bright orange as if they're kind of mushroom that is coming out of him. You know, the well, Walking Dead and so on, they all talk about infection with fungus or mushroom, that sort of stuff. And I like to paint these bright orange because then it also goes well with the rust that I have on the rest of my army. You know, look at my Plague Burst Crawler over here. Bright orange rust everywhere and this one it will then match the colors of my Poxwalker and of this Plague Marine that I have over here. Him as well. We'll get them both towards the same color. And then you have some nice unifying elements throughout your army. You have Poxwalkers you have, that are skin colored. You have Marines that are green. You have vehicles. At least I have vehicles that are white, like pre-Heresy era paint scheme. But they all have these unifying elements, like this bright orange in them. And that way you can tie the army together again. And after this, it is time to take a look at him because he's almost done as a sort of slap chop model, but he's not done for me. Now this would be tournament ready and uh, it's more than three paints. The base is also painted and it's not minimum effort either. So people can't really complain if you show up with an army painted like this, but it's not good enough for me. I like to paint a little bit more, get some more detail in there. So I'm going to show you how to go from this to this and we're gonna start by getting some of those bubos to pop a little bit more and we do that by just getting some nurgling green and just going from one to the other and just stipple a little bit put a little bit of extra nurgling green on there that nurgling green is what we used before to dry brush to highlight everything and this is just to make sure that the whole bus boil is covered with the nurgling green then we take some Blood Angels contrast paint and dilute it heavily. And I mean really heavily. I'd say maybe one part contrast paint to about three or four parts water. And we're just going to drop a droplet around these pubos we just touched up with the green. And that way the green will pop even more and it will look like the skin around it is even hurting, is more affected than it looks before. Here, here's three close to each other. And we just try to get this mixture, this diluted mixture of contrast paint around it like that. And that will dry up and it will get into the recesses a bit more and it will look like it's really, really starting to get infected. Then we go through all those bubos again, but with some flayed one flesh. And that's a nice sort of bone color, good pus color as well. And we just go over all of these pus boils again and make them now stand out a little bit more. You don't want to paint over all of the green. You'd like to keep some of the green visible, but just sort of the tip of the boil now becomes highlighted with some of this yellow. Next up is some Nurgle's Rot because we don't only have boils that are still intact, we have a few that have popped as well. So like this one here, this hole. So I'm just going to fill it with Nurgle's Rot and then I'm going to draw a little line going down as if it's just popped open and the uh, Nurgle's rot bus is leaking out and you can go wild with this you can add a lot more you can do a lot less you can also add it to other features like have it leak from his ear here let's have it leak from there and then it hits his chest for a bit uh, there's something going on over here let's make it leak some Nurgle's rot as well and oh there's a there's a proper hole here from a boil and let's let that leak some more and so you can go over the whole model. You can also add some to the weapon if you like. And make it look like it's uh, an infected weapon, a plague weapon. That is just there striking things. And as soon as it strikes, it sort of injects the Nurgle Rot into your opponent. Pretty cool story to tell while you're painting your miniatures. But yeah, you can be go wild. Add some to his mouth, leaking out. Who knows? Oh, and I have to say the flayed one flesh, I also did his teeth with it and the maggots that you see crawling around. And wherever these maggots are, I add a little bit of Nurgle's Rod as well. I like to give the impression that they are spreading this sort of slime wherever they are crawling. And so wherever I have a maggot, I add some Nurgle's Rod. But it's not just Nurgle's Rod that's leaking out, it's also some blood for the blood god. But with this, I'm going to be quite sparingly. I just want to give the impression that these pus boils, they don't just open and ooze pus, they also leak out a little bit of blood. 
And again, putting this red next to the green makes the green look greener and the red look redder. Same as we did with going there with the contrast blood angels around the pus boils. So here this big hole, let's make it bleed a little bit as well, just to add some extra effects. And again, you can do this on the weapon as well. You can add some blood splatter if you like, why not? Yeah, we'll do some blood splatter as well. And we're doing that with a flat dry brush and some blood for the blood god. And I'm just gonna make some sweeping movements in the counter direction of where the weapon would swing in. So the weapon is going that way, so the blood goes that way. And add some to his hand as well. Let's imagine some blood is dripping down from the weapon. Touches his hand. Let's do the front as well, the point you actually want to see. So now he's got some nice blood and gore on him. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's do his eyes while I still have my contrast blood angels red on my wet palette. And I'm just going to take a drop with a small brush and drop uh, that droplet into his eye. And it will make his eye, well, red, but also a bit glowy because uh, it will go into the recesses and sort of the tip of the eyeball is still sticking out and it's slightly lighter than the recesses. So. You could also do green, you could also do blue, you can pick whatever you want, but I would do something with the eyes to at least make them stand out a bit. Now he needs some more browns in him, and I'm going to do that by painting this belt with snake bite leather. And again, I said this at the start of the video, it's good to know which contrast paints can go over which other contrast paints. And so this brown over the green is perfectly fine. It'll cover, it won't look the same as when you would paint it over the bone base spray color but it will still look nice and dark brown and nice leathery and it will break up the monotony of these pants. And now it's time for some streaking grime. But first, we're gonna do some basing. And the basing of my Death Guard army is the same everywhere. I first use some Armageddon dust and I make a very thin layer out of this. And then after that, wash it with some Reikland flesh shade. But while this is still wet, Take some non-oil and then just drop it onto the base here and there. And that will give you some more interesting bases with a bit of dark spots and some lighter dark, uh, red spots as well. And we're going to continue with some more basing material. And this is Playground from AK Interactive. And I use this and I put it sort of around the feet of my Poxwalkers, but also my Plague Marines and my Terminators, all of them. Kind of to show that they are spreading this foul playground around wherever they plant their feet. And so it's behind him, but not in front of him. And it is creeping up on his feet. And this way you really get that impression that they are moving forward and everything behind them is getting diseased and rotting away. It's time for streaking grind. And this is pretty much grimdark in a pot. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you watch my video on how to use streaking grime. And I apply it from pretty much his pants going down. I don't want to cover his body because all those nice colors that we painted over there, they will just get grimed up and dirty and you won't see all the slime and the guts and the dirt and so on that is spilling out. Uh, I do the base as well because I want this to look as if it's grime that's been kicked up from the dirt and it's covering his legs, he's covering his skin a bit on the, on the feet but it is coming from the dirt and if you paint them both with streaking grime we will sort of unify these two elements. And after this we take some light crusted rust deposits from Ega Interactive to just paint the tips of these cordyceps. And if you're not into enamels and you don't want streaking grime and you don't want uh, these uh, rust uh, deposits you could just use uh, Angrax Earth Shade to wash the pans and the legs and dry brush these sticking out bits with some yellow, uh, bright yellow I would do. Try to unify it with whatever rust you have. That's why I'm using crusted rust deposits. This is what I have on my Plague Burst crawler over there, which you can see. Now after this, we're just gonna have to finish the base a little bit more. Because my bases, I want them to be full of flowers and grass. So I got here from Gamers Grass a nice marshland set, which is, has four different grass types in there, and violet flowers. Because if you paint 60 box walkers, you're gonna have three units of 20 on the table. You wanna be able to figure out which unit is which. And if you paint them all the same, how are you gonna do that? Well. I do that with different colors of flowers on their bases. So this guy will get violet flowers and that makes him part of the purple squad. And then I have an orange squad and a sort of reddish squad. And after these flowers are on there, this mini looks like 
this. And there he's done, ready to go and hug some more Cadian troops and make more friends, make more boxwalkers for Papa Nurgle. I showed you how to paint him like this in a simple slap chop style and how to take it a little bit further then. And you can see that you can actually first do slap chop, go play with your army and slowly over time paint them more and more beautiful as you like. Now, I would definitely subscribe if you want to see more Death Guard, because I'm painting the rest of my Death Guard army anyway. I'm going to do some characters, my Lord of Virulence. I'm going to do some Morty, maybe, Plague Marines, Rhinos, who knows what else is coming. But my whole Death Guard army, I'm going to be painting on camera. So subscribe if you want to see more and check out this video if you want to see something cool now.